Hello, welcome to this video on an introduction to basically multivariable integration. I call them double integrals, but later it's going to be triple integrals. So let's just call it multivariable integration. And so to remember, uh, to know what's going on with double integrals, we have to know what's first what was going on back when we did single integrals. Remember, we were trying to measure the area under a graph above the x axis between two known values, a and b. And the way we did that is we took the interval and we chopped it into sub intervals and we picked a place somewhere to evaluate the function height and that gave us the, the height of the rectangle and then the delta x was the width of the rectangle. This picture represents six of them here in the uh, summation we have n equals six. Xi star is the place, it looks like the picture is telling me that it's the midpoint and so yeah, delta x, yeah. that was approximation, how do you get the real area? The actual area. Well, you're going to need more rectangles. So you're going to let the number of rectangles go to infinity and you'll have exact area. That's called a Riemann sum. And that's a definition of integration there. So the limit as n goes to infinity on that sum becomes the integration symbol. And you find the antiderivative, fundamental thermal calculus. Great. So what about a double integral then? So if you're measuring area, for a single variable, then what are you going to be measuring for two input variables? You're going to be measuring volume under some surface above the xy plane, but some region in the xy plane. And you're going to be taking that region and chop it into sub intervals. We're going to start off with a simple region, a rectangle. Chop that into sub intervals. So you have an interval on x and an interval on y chop those into sub intervals. You don't have to chop them into the same amount. Okay. And then um, you'll be finding these volumes, these rectangular boxes, the volume of them. And it'll be an approximation to the volume of this three dimensional shape. To get the exact volume, we're going to figure out how to do that. But the region that's in the XY plane, we're going to chop it into sub regions. And so we have this, um, x region chopped into six, this x interval chopped into six sub intervals, this y interval chopped into four sub intervals. Giving us these rectangular blocks. And then we're going to um, pick a place in the rectangle to evaluate the function, call that xi star yj star, it's a point, and we're going to plug that point into the function. And what we're going to get out coming above this will be some surface. We're going to get a Area the base times the high, we're going to get a rectangular prism, a box, and this one has 24 different boxes. We're, we're taking the, um, we're adding up this for the six along X and we're adding up for the four along Y. So 24 different ones. It's a double summation. This isn't the same picture as what was going on with the previous slide. This one has many more, but anyway, that's the idea. Double summation. Uh, I is the uh, one we use for X's sub intervals and J is the one we use for Y's sub intervals. So it's a double summation, summing over I as I goes from one to N, summing over J as J goes from one to M. And just adding up these rectangular volumes, rectangular prism volumes. Delta A is the area of the base. All right, great. So here's an example. We have our job is to approximate the volume line under the graph of an elliptic paraboloid and above a rectangular region in the xy plane. You'll be told which uh, rectangular region you'll be using. You'll be told how to partition that, how to subdivide that. You'll even be told where to evaluate the function at. And so this is saying uh, use the line x equals half to cut the x integral down the middle. Use the line y equals 1 to cut the y integral down the middle. So you have four different rectangles here. And on those rectangles, when it's time to evaluate the function, go to the upper right-hand corner. I'm sure the word hand shouldn't be in there, but anyway. Upper right corner. Seems weird. All right, so we have those points. One, one half and one, and one half and two. One and one, and one and two. We're going to have to evaluate the function at those places. Simple enough function, we could do it without a calculator, it's fine. And here's what the volume will look like. The approximation, it's an under 
estimate is not going to be um, very close, it seems, from the picture to what the true volume will be, but we're just getting started with the approximation. So there it is. All right, great. So we have the area of the rectangle is called delta A, and then the height of the rectangular prism is it's called the function at that point. So we have four different guys to add up. Delta A is in each one of them. What is delta A? It's the, it's the same. It doesn't change. It's the x times delta x times delta y, the change in x and change in y. So it's going to be a half for x and one for y. All right, great. So then what do we do? Well, we can pull that out. And then let's go ahead and plug these in. One half for x and one for y. You end up with 13 halves. One half for x and two for y, you end up with seven halves, one and one, one for x and one for y, you definitely get a five, one for x and two for y, you definitely get a two. Adding all those up, that's 10 plus seven, and the one half is pulled outside, your approximation is 17 over two. Eight and a half, a bad approximation. What we're gonna do in a, um, a later video is, I'm gonna show you how to do this exactly, of course, and find the exact answer. So this whole set of videos here is about restricting yourself to only have rectangular regions. Okay. There's a whole nother video set where we restrict that. We let that go. We let that restriction go. You don't have to have rectangular regions. And so you can have any general kind of a blob in the XY plane as your region. And that that's where it gets really difficult at. But let's go ahead and end this video for now. Um, I just wanted to show you how the approximations work. In the next video, we'll see how to find the answer exactly. All right. Thank you for watching. My name is Nakaya Rimmer. I'll help you through this multivariable calculus journey. Please comment down below, like, and subscribe. Reach out to me if you have any questions. Um, please find your way to my website if you need extra resources, uh, extra problems, tutoring. Um, you can get me there. All right. Take care. See you next video.